So I wanted to speak a little bit about guilt and shame. Um, so I think a lot of us deal with uh, guilt and shame in the West. Um, and especially those that are suffering from active addictions or recovering from addictions. And I think most of us, um, most of us have some sort of addiction. It doesn't have to be towards drugs and alcohol. It could be addiction, uh, you know, uh, to work, um, shopping. You know, and addictions are usually um, a way to soothe ourselves, you know, a way to kind of deal with the pain that we're in. Um, and a lot of times that we're not really aware of that pain. So the, the, um, the action is to distract from the unknown. You know, very quickly we go into like a knee-jerk reaction. We, you know, wh whether it's addiction to cell phone or drugs or alcohol, whatever it is. And uh, from, you know, and, and the distraction can also be a distraction from certain repressed emotions that we've never allowed ourselves to experience, you know, feeling a lot of people that suffer from addictions, you know, have have like a core belief or a core emotion of not feeling good enough, not feeling loved, feeling less than. And so we're constantly like battling that, that belief to try to get out of that feeling of guilt and shame. But the very action of battling, uh, of, um, battling that belief that we're not good enough um, creates a, um, it kind of uh, confirms the belief in a way, you know, because if we were good enough, we, didn't, we wouldn't have to battle. So then you, you get into this kind of inner conflict. Um, so the guilt and shame, I look at those, and I'm not saying guilt and shame is never necessary. I'm just saying in most cases, it's probably not. Obviously, if you've harm someone, you've murdered someone, or if you've done some horrible thing, then guilt and shame, you know, is appropriate, and it's there, you know, I think it does have a, a purpose, um, but for most of us that experience this, um, it's, it doesn't really have a purpose, and it's not really useful, you know, it's, it, and it kind of, it can keep you uh, stuck. So it's kind of like I look at it as like a fog, a very thick fog that prevents me from seeing um, things clearly. You know, it, uh, I'm like stuck in this fog. One thing that, one way to look at it that might help and um, is the action of surrender. You know, when you're feeling, first you have to like become conscious that you're experiencing uh, guilt and shame you know so it's just once you become conscious of it and you start to know the feeling and the heaviness of it and the thought loop that goes with it that saying i you know i'm wrong as a human being and you know like it just really feels against oneself and it's a very like there's this heaviness to it um and you know the body Maybe the head is tilted. You don't want to look at people in the eyes. You know, um, bodies feeling contracted. Shoulders are, are forward and you're like slumped over. And so you get, once you become aware of these signs that, you know, you're, you're in this guilt and shame, what you could, one thing you can do is, is you can surrender those emotions. You can say something like, you know, I give, I don't want this guilt and shame, you know, I, I give it to you, you know, you can surrender it to a higher power, uh, God, if you choose to use, you know, if you believe in a God, a uh, higher self, the universe, whatever you choose, you can, you know, just being willing to, you know, I, I think with surrender is, I don't think it's something that can be forced, but you can be willing to, and I think the surrender comes on its own. You know, but just being open to surrendering. And when you're open into surrendering uh, this guilt and shame, what it's saying is it's the process of saying yes to what is. 
And it's saying yes to um, yourself, your, the human aspects of yourself. And to be human means that you have some conditioning. I don't think you can be human without, we all go through a little bit of conditioning. So the behaviors come out of this, the habits come out of this. Um, so it's, it's acknowledging and saying yes to this. What if I couldn't be human without having um, these aspects that make me human? You know, whether it's uh, sexual desires, you know, resentment, uh, insecurity, um, anger, you know, um, feeling less than, uh, you know, whatever it is, jealousy, you know, whatever it is, and the behaviors that come from it and the habits that sometimes pop its head up over and over and over and it can be frustrating. Um, so it's acknowledging that this is part of the game, you know, and, and when you're turning it over to a higher power or to a higher intelligence, it's just saying that, you know, I didn't create the game, you know, uh, as far as I know, you know, I, I'm a participant um, in the game. This piece of the puzzle is, is, is only part of the whole picture of the puzzle. I'm only looking at a piece of it and maybe I'm judging that piece very harshly because I think it, it should look a certain way. But maybe these things that we feel are obstacles in our journey are actually the path. To, to surrender this is saying that I'm, I only have a narrow view of it and willing to surrender that there may be a bigger view. So these things that I'm condemning or judging within myself, I don't see what part they have to pl play in the bigger picture. Uh, and a good analogy, I think, is I, I met a uh, pilot not a few weeks ago, an old pilot, and he said one of the things that he loved about flying is being above the, uh, being above the city and seeing things so small, like seeing the people and the building, everything's so small. And he's up in the sky and looking down and everything's tiny. And he said it just gives him perspective on life. Above him is the blue sky that goes on forever and ever. And, you know, and then the space and it just goes on and on. But below, everything's very small. And that's like, I, I call that the human part, you know, so, you know, so we can be in the sky and still we can hold the sky in our heart, that vast sky and the vastness of who we are. If we go into the guilt and shame, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to be in the other aspects, the, you know, the full spectrum of emotions and, and everything that is there everything that makes us human that is uh, beautiful and it is and it is what is so it is um, it is a very I look at it as a very important part of of the piece of what this whatever you know this puzzle is it starts with doing our best not to get lost in the guilt and the shame you know so one way is to turn it over to a power greater, greater than ourselves. Or if we can, you know, sometimes you can just not touch it. When you really get, when it really becomes clear as to what it is, and re, when you really feel, when you can feel the subtlety of it, when you really feel the energy, and the, when you really become aware of this specific thought pattern that goes with it, then you, you may have the strength just to not, go into the guilt and shame and and it's not a it's not a by a spiritual bypass at all you know because it's allowing you to really go very deeply into aspects of uh, your humanity uh, really deeply into your conditioning your you know certain emotions fear anxiety feeling not good enough you know it, it's it's helping you to go into those when you not lost in the guilt and shame. So I hope this helps somebody. I didn't mean to go on so long. <laughs> Thanks.